Today I'll show you how to perform a detailed literature review including the search both on PubMed and Google. This video is taken from our research course from Idea to Publication and if you want full access to the course, check the link in the description below. And now let's move on to talk about how to perform a quick literature review. What are the sources that you need to look at when you're doing your literature review? My recommendation is to start with Google. I know uh, so many researchers prefer to start with PubMed, but I feel that Google is a better search engine and definitely you will include PubMed in your search, but I would like to start with Google to at least identify the key papers about this topic because the, the, as I'll show you now, that will help you a lot and save you so much time. So I usually start with Google and then I go to PubMed and then I search for the cited by suggested and I'll show you that in a minute, what does that mean? And then you go and look at the references of the articles and when you're doing that, you don't have to read the whole paper to make sure that this fits your criteria or this is something you want to include in your, in your search. You can just read the abstract of the paper, sometimes the methods, to make sure that this is something you're interested in or not. How do you do a detailed literature review? You have to rely more on PubMed for a detailed literature review and the references of the key articles for the topic you're talking about. So now I'm going to go and show you exactly how I do that for actually one of the uh, topics I'm working on right now. So now I'm on Google and the topic that I'm studying now is the impact of obesity on the outcomes of prepectoral breast reconstruction. Just to give you a quick overview of what does that mean. So when, whenever you're reconstructing the breast, you can put the implant either in front of the pectoralis muscle or under the pectoralis muscle. So these two techniques are different and ha each has advantages and disadvantages. And what I'm trying to study is whether one technique is better than the other for patients with high BMI. So generally I start with a general search term that relates to the topic of interest. And in this case, I can start by typing the, the impact of obesity on prepectoral breast reconstruction outcomes. So when you type this in Google, you will receive different things. PubMed articles, you will receive websites, and a bunch of other things. So for me to narrow down the search only to PubMed articles, you can either do the scholarly articles for, for, the, uh, for the things that I searched, or you can type just NCBI or PubMed next to it. So when I type NCBI, you will receive the PubMed articles that have that are related to this. And the reason why I prefer Google is because, as I said, it gives you the key papers about this topic because the Google search in engine is one of the best. So this is one paper I found. Should, be, should obesity be considered as a contraindication for prepectoral breast reconstruction? So I'm trying to, cons to assess prepectoral versus subpectoral for patients with high BMI. So what I can do is I can go and look at the background, methods, results, conclusion. I usually start with the methods. So retrospective chart review, okay, of patients who underwent two stage, um, only women with high BMI. So this is good because I'm trying to assess obesity. And then I see whether this fits my criteria or not. So you can see here there are two groups, prepectoral, subpectoral. I'm not reading the whole abstract even. I'm just having like quick uh, overlook on this. And when you're experienced with the topic, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's, it will be easier for you now because this topic might be new to you. You're not sure where to look, but generally look at the methods, look at the division of groups, and maybe you can read the conclusion. It depends on what, what is the topic, but here I find prepectoral, subpectoral, so two, two groups, and high BMI, so this fits my criteria. What I need to do now is take this paper and use it to find other papers. And here I'll explain the, some of the things I mentioned previously. One of the things you can assess is this comment in. Comment in means that somebody has written a reply or a discussion for this paper. And if this paper is important for your study, it's important also for you to see what other people think about this paper. They might add extra references, they might tell you this paper is good or this paper uh, needs some improvement. Uh, I think this paper is better. So you can start looking for other papers from the discussions of papers or comments or replies on the paper. 
What you can also do is the similar articles. This is what I meant by suggested in the slide. PubMed suggests some articles that are similar to the topic you're searching. So when you do your search and you find the key paper, it's good to look at the similar articles. Reducing expansion visits, uh, maybe, maybe not. So it, it has the two groups, but it doesn't have the, the, the BMI in the title. It might have it in the abstract. So maybe you can go and look at this to see if BMI is, uh, is important. So they assess BMI as one of the variables, but it doesn't seem that they assessed it extensively. So you can go and look at the abstract. Sometimes you might need to go and look at the full text article for you to make sure that this is important or not. But at this stage, I'm doing the quick literature review. So you have to be careful here. I'm doing the quick literature review. So I start with Google, find one or two papers, and then do the similar articles. So I'm not going in the details of the papers. So this one, safety endpoint, risk factors, maybe, maybe not. Uh, this one is assessing the post-operative complications, the two groups, again, maybe, maybe not. So the similar articles can give you an idea of what PubMed thinks is similar to your paper, the paper that you found helpful, and you can go from there and use these papers to continue your literature search. The cited by means that the this paper here, the one above by Benuelos, has is included in the references of these two papers. So if we go to these papers and look at their references, one of the references will be this paper. So this, the Benuelos paper, is cited by these two papers. And if these two papers cited the Banuelos paper, that means that there is something similar in their study. That's why they cited our key paper, because they are talking about something similar. So that's why sometimes it's important to assess the paper that have cited the key paper you found. Because if this is talking about obesity and these two papers cited this big paper in their references, it might, they might be also talking about obesity. So you can go and search, look at their title, look at their abstract to see if there's something interesting there. The references. The references of this key paper are also important. And you do that for every single paper you find, you found, because I, I'm not going to do that for every single paper here, but you have to do that when you're doing your literature search, even the quick one. You don't have to read the whole references. Uh, for example, if you read here, reconstruction of female following radical mastectomy. This is probably not related to our search. It might be here, some, some down, somewhere down. But uh, if you don't want to read the whole references, what you can do is look at the paper. In the introduction, generally, they look at the previous studies. So they can tell you that previous studies have assessed also the BMI on, on pre-pectoral versus sub-pectoral. So you can, and they put four to five. So you don't have, have, you don't have to look at reference one, two, three. You go directly to four to six or four to eight and look at these references. So this is how you do it in, in PubMed. After you find the article, you go and look at the paper. You look in the discussions of included along with this paper, articles suggested by PubMed, articles that have cited this paper. And you can look also at the references of this paper. You can go back to, to Google now. So this is only one paper. So now you can go back to Google and see another paper. So this one is effect of BMI on outcomes after prepectoral breast reconstruction. This also seems interesting to, to, uh, and related to our, our topic. So you can read the, the, meth the abstract. So here I'm looking 366, so this is a big study. This is what the first thing my eye looked at. And here they classified patients into five BMI groups. So this is very related to uh, BMI obesity, but I'm not sure if they had included subpectoral breast reconstruction. So you can check that by reading either the abstract, the methods, or the, the full paper. But here it's saying pre-pectoral reconstruction. So probably they have not assessed the subpectoral. So we can use this paper for some information, but not necessarily the exact same design as our paper. You can also look at the comment in, which means a reply for this paper, similar articles. And so you can see here, the Banuelos one is showing in the similar articles. So PubMed is telling you this article is similar to this and actually both of these papers are of interest to ours. So cited by, which means this paper by 
Gabriel is included in the references of these three papers. So it's important to look at them. And you can look at the references of the Gabriel paper or only a few of them that relates to your topic. Here you can see the impact of obesity on breast surgery complications. This is important. This is related to our topic. So you can read it. Uh, have a look at it. Is it exactly the same? Is it different? And you start collecting your articles. So this is how you do it. I, I'm not able to do the full text article now because uh, there is no access through this. But if you have access, you can check also the full text articles. I also wanted to show you if you want to get decided by. Do you see decided by? So this means, as we discussed the same exact same thing, uh, that eight articles have included this paper in their references. That's why you, it could be of interest for to you to look at these articles. Google always has higher number than PubMed. So you see here it's eight. For in PubMed it's three or two actually because Google has a broader catch. They include PubMed articles, online websites, non-PubMed articles. So it, it has a wider uh, range of articles that have cited this paper. So we cannot click. Previously, you used to be able to click on cited by, but now you go to scholarly articles and you're able to click on the cited by. So you can see the list of articles that have cited this paper. So just an example, this is the list. You can see the next list and you can start looking at these papers. Again, it's, it's this quick literature, literature review, it's not... It doesn't mean that you can do it in five minutes. Quick, I mean, you can do it in maybe three, four hours. The detailed one might take six, seven, or maybe more because you want to make sure that nobody has published anything about this before or maybe they published a study or two, but you want to find a unique angle or, or larger sample size or something different that would make your paper stand out. So the way I started my search so far is through Google. So we started with Google and then we went to PubMed and we looked at these articles. But you also need to do some search through PubMed itself. So what you can do is, is go here to the search PubMed and maybe type uh, obesity and prepectoral breast reconstruction. And just type uh, enter or search. And we found 11 results. And the Banuelos one is one of them. The, we found other papers too. And you can start looking at these papers. Sometimes from the title, you find if this is something interesting or not. Sometimes you need to read the abstract. Sometimes you need to read the full text article. From PubMed, you're able to do the, the filters. So you know how many papers have been published this year versus last year, the year before. And you can filter based on that. You can filter based on the article type. This is not 100% accurate. So don't rely 100% on this but you can use it if you're only looking for systematic reviews or reviews. And you can also, pop, uh, as I said, filter based on the years. So you only want the papers within a year from now, five years from now, or 10 years, or everything. You might ask yourself, is it possible that only 11 papers have written about obesity and prepectoral breast reconstruction? You are right in your concern because it is interesting that only 11 papers have written about that. The reason might be is that I'm doing a very detailed search so the way, the best way to do it is to keep it more broad. And then you, based on your experience, you decide whether this paper should be included or not. So actually the better way to do this is remove a prepectoral because other papers might have not used that in their title or even in the abstract, but they included it in the methods. Or maybe they use a different term than prepectoral. So what you can do is just type obesity and breast reconstruction. Let's see how many papers we'll find. We found 533 papers. So this is much more accurate result. You, you'll find that most of these papers do not relate to your topic, but it's better to do, to do it this way so you don't miss any key papers about this topic. You can also search body mass index or let's start with BMI. BMI and breast reconstruction. And let's see how many results we get. We get 503 results. Let's search body mass index and breast reconstruction. We get over a thousand results. So you'll see that although I'm typing some, some so obesity, BMI, body mass index, they're related similar terms. We had 500, 500, and now we're thousand. So I'm, I'm showing you this example specifically because I want you to be careful when you're doing your, your search. Because sometimes 
you do your search, for example, with body mass index or pre-pectoral breast reconstruction, and you find 11 results and none of them relate, perfect, you, you go ahead with the study. And then when you're writing the discussion or when you're talking to mentors or you received response from the journal, you find out that there were way more papers that you missed with your search. So be careful with the, with the terms you use, with the keywords you put in here and in Google, because that will decide how many papers you'll find. And when you're searching the references of these papers, the cited by suggested, you'll be able to identify what are the different terms for prepectoral. Sometimes they use subcutaneous uh, breast reconstruction or subcutaneous implant placement. So you need to include all these keywords so you capture everything. You definitely don't need to go through the thousand papers here, but you, you can start looking at, le at least at the most recent ones and uh, the references of papers because if this paper is published in 2019 and it said that we are the first paper to do this or no prior studies have done that, you can maybe search 20, uh, 2021, 2020, and 2019. You don't have to search everything. But you don't have to trust every single thing a paper says because sometimes they might also have missed a paper or the other papers or the reviewers did not look at that or did not... Uh, make sure that the, the authors did not miss any paper. So even though some uh, you might read in some journals or some articles that we are the first to do this, don't trust that 100%. Probably it's true, but don't trust that 100% and do your own search and make sure of that. If you found four or five papers saying the same exact thing, this is the first paper, this is the first paper, that makes it more likely, but still do your own search and make sure of that. As I mentioned in the slide, if you want to do the more detailed search, it's better to do it with PubMed. I recommend starting with the quick uh, literature review strategy that I told you about, which is the Google suggested cited references, uh, quick literature review through PubMed. But after you identify your key papers, maybe you can go to the advanced option in PubMed. And here you can start looking for specific key terms, for example, body mass index. And maybe here you can search for uh, or uh, BMI and we can add also or obesity. And then click or. So now we have the first query as body mass index or BMI or obesity. Or maybe you can include the or inside. So you can have uh, body mass index or BMI or obesity and then we click for example breast reconstruction here and we click add with and so you'll see that this is all one or it's this or this or obesity so any of these three and breast reconstruction you can have these three and breast reconstruction or prepectoral breast reconstruction or subcutaneous breast reconstruction. So you would start making the categories, the and or based on your search strategy, and then you can click search. And you see here we got way more results using breast reconstruction, body mass index, or BMI or obesity using the advanced search. Generally, the advanced option is used for more detailed literature review or for systematic reviews. And I will cover the details of uh, how to do that in the systematic review course. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how, how that works. Because actually finding these terms, the body mass index, BMI, obesity, is the difficult task. It's not writing the and and ors. Finding these terms is uh, very time consuming and sometimes you might spend hours and hours trying to find these keywords and you find them from the key papers. So after you do the, your quick literature review, you go to these papers, the key ones, and you try to find what key terms did, did they use to describe prepectoral breast reconstruction? What did what the, are the key terms they use to describe obesity? So you start finding these keywords and you build a long list of these keywords and then you start linking it with and and or. So to summarize, you can start your quick literature review with Google go to PubMed, uh, look at the cited by, the discussions associated with the paper, the suggested articles by, by PubMed, 
the references of the paper and then go from a paper to another to capture all the key articles and then do a quick literature search using using the PubMed search bar. But if you want to do a more advanced one, you have to look for the keywords, you have to uh, find the keywords that relates to your topic and then create that uh, that kind of equation or code for, for the for the topic you're searching about. I recommend doing the quick literature search for every single research idea or research question you might think of because although it might take you two, three, four hours to do, but it will save you so much time if you found that this paper or this research idea is not worth pursuing. My recommendation is to start playing with this strategy I told you about. I'll leave in the quizzes some examples of uh, research questions that I would like you to do a literature search for and then I'll provide the key articles for, for that literature search and then you can see if you found the key papers for that topic or you missed them and what you can do better for that. You can also try just find different research papers and do literature search for the topic and see if you're able to identify the key references included in that paper. And now let's move on to talk about the IRB process.